Hey, hey, glitter friends. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this bracelet inspired tumbler. Let's get started. We're going to start with a 20 ounce skinny tumbler prepped and spray painted with ultra matte white spray paint. I'm going to name this next section. Watch me struggle with a simple piece of painter's tape. <laughs> what I'm trying to do here, if I could get it stuck onto the cup correctly, is to put a piece of tape centered in the middle of my tumbler. It's really personal preference if you would like to scoot it up or down a bit, judging on where you want to put your decal. But for this design that I have planned, I wanted it almost directly in the middle. I'm using a one inch wide piece of tape here. And because that wasn't quite big enough for what I had planned for this cup, you can see I'm going to double down and put another piece of tape right on top of the other one. I would say this brings this taped off middle section to roughly an inch and a third. I'm going to be using the epoxy method for today's glitter application. You can see I've mixed up a very small amount of epoxy. Today I'm using Mr. Nola's Glitter Speed Dry Epoxy. It's a fast set epoxy that where I live takes about two hours to dry. So it really speeds up my process here. When applying glitter with the epoxy method, you want to make sure you're using a very, very thin layer of epoxy. If you use too much, you run the risk of your glitter looking wet or some would call slick in spots where there is too much epoxy and the glitter has flattened out more there than it has in the other areas of the cup. The first glitter I'm going to be applying today is CC DIY's Sterling Snow. Now normally I recommend going dark to light for glitter application when you're using multiple glitters, but because this glitter creates quite literally a snow cloud after application, I'm going to go ahead and use it first, wait for the glitter to settle, and then move on to my next one. Because this glitter is so light and airy, I'm going to go through and gently pat down some of the glitter that is just sitting on the surface of the cup. Once the coast is clear and my craft room no longer looks like a winter wonderland, I'm going to go back and apply more epoxy to the lower half of my cup in preparation for my second glitter. For the lower half of my tumbler, I'm using this beautiful rich wine color from Mr. Nola's Glitter. As to not contaminate my top glitter, I'm going to apply this very carefully with my cup at a slant.
because I used a quick setting epoxy, I'm going to pull my tape immediately. Once my epoxy is dry in about two hours, I'll take my cup out to my garage where I will seal it two times with a clear matte sealant spray paint. In my first layer of epoxy, you can see I'm adding a couple of very small pinches of a micro fine glitter. In this instance, it's Mr. Nola's glitter, Silver Fox Jr. I do this to several of my cups just because I like the small added shimmer that it gives to the overall finish. Even though I've used a spray sealant to help my glitter stay in place, you can see for this split tumbler, I'm going to try to apply all of my epoxy to the top half first and then move on to the lower half to avoid any extra contamination that could happen even though I have sealed it. So you're probably wondering, hey, where is the beginning of this video section? It's pretty important, right? Well, let me tell you. It's in the Megan forgot to hit record button part that won't be showing up. Sorry, guys. After my first layer of epoxy has cured, I've gone ahead and taped off the middle section that is the focal point of my tumbler. As you can see here, I am taking various sizes of half pearl beads that have an adhesive backing that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I started out with the largest of the three bead sizes and laid them around the cup sporadically in no discernible pattern. I'll continue to work my way around the cup using the medium sized beads and then after that the small ones until I'm happy with the spacing pattern and amount of beads on the tumbler. It became apparent to me that using my fingers to apply these smaller stones wasn't quite cutting it. So I played around with a few different tools and eventually settled on the X-Acto knife to apply these, which I highly recommend. It made it a lot easier to peel them off the backing and apply them exactly where I wanted without them falling off the cup.
Finishing up, I made one last look around my tumbler to see if there were any stone sizes that I wanted to remove and replace with others, or if there were any extra holes that I would like to fill. I'm now going to tape off the rest of my tumbler so I can spray paint the bedazzled middle section with Krylon Metallic Rose Gold Spray Paint. After my spray paint is dry, I'm going to take the spray adhesive that I got at Hobby Lobby and lightly coat the middle section. I'll give that about a minute to dry before I'm ready to start applying my gold leaf. Today I'm using Mr. Nola's Glitter Foil Flakes in Rose Gold, which happens to be an almost exact match to the spray paint. I'll then take my foil flakes and begin to apply all the way around this band with my fingers, lightly burnishing in as I go. I'll work my way around the tumbler until I think I have a pretty good coating of flakes over all of my adhesive layer. Once I'm satisfied with my coverage level, I'll take a small dry bristled brush and begin to work in and out between the beads, burnishing down in between the cracks, making sure everything is laying flat. I prefer using a very soft bristled brush for this because there's less risk of rubbing too hard and accidentally removing any of your flakes and exposing the paint underneath.
Continue working your gold flakes into your adhesive layer all the way around the cup until you're satisfied with the way it looks and you're sure that there are no loose flakes left. After I pull my tape, I'll check for any overspray and rogue gold flakes and clean them up before it's off to the garage to get yet another coat of clear sealant. For my pinstriping today, I am using a Cricut adhesive foil vinyl in rose gold. For my three different stripes, the first one I'm using here is cut at a 1 8 inch stripe and the next two being 1 16 inch stripes. I've chosen to lay my pinstriping all very closely together. I was going for a stacked bangle bracelet look, but please feel free to add as many or as few as you want depending on your artistic vision. To tie our cup together today, I'm using the same vinyl I used as the pinstriping below for this decal I whipped up in Cricut Design Space. If you'd like to recreate this decal, the font I used for Hello was Sadlo, and I used Baskerville Old Face font for Lover. I've measured this decal out to be three and a half inches wide and two inches tall. Because metallic vinyl can be kind of tricky and cause issues with air bubbles and lifting, I'll give this a quick seal before we move on to our next layer of epoxy. Because I'll need an extended work time, for this layer of epoxy, I'm using Mr. Nola's Glitter Glass Coat Epoxy. As you can tell, I'm a pretty big fan of this type of brush. I'm going to grab a clean new one from the big pack I bought on Amazon and use it to start applying epoxy very lightly in thin layers to my middle section first. Much like you did earlier, you're now going to take your epoxy and start slowly and thinly working your epoxy all the way around each nook and cranny, making sure that your entire surface is covered but not pooled with epoxy because that will definitely take away the details. Continue to work your way around until your middle section is completely covered. 
If you catch a glimpse of my medicine cup in the lower right corner, you'll see I've mixed up a pretty small amount of epoxy for this layer. I always like to keep my layers thin and buildable, but especially with this layer, you definitely do not want it too thick. I mixed up 15 milliliters total and still had a little left over after I was done. After I'm satisfied with the amount of epoxy that I have covering my middle 3D section, I'm going to take my brush and extend that thin layer onto my vinyl pen striping. I like to pull my epoxy brushwork out just a hair from my 3D elements just to make sure I'm not getting any additional pooling from applying epoxy normally with a gloved finger. I'll now finish applying this layer of epoxy as I would a normal tumbler that doesn't have 3D elements, but still being very mindful to pull upward and away from the middle so there is no additional epoxy left there.
because I used a regular set epoxy for this layer, I will give it a full 12 hours to cure before I come back in and reapply another layer just like I did this one for its final coat layer of epoxy. That will bring my epoxy coat layer to a total of three, which to me gives it plenty of protection, yet keeps it from feeling too heavy and cumbersome. That being said, there really is no wrong or right amount of layers to put on your tumbler. So feel free to please add as many or as few as you feel comfortable adding. And that's it for today. Thanks for joining us for this fun 3D inspired tumbler. Be sure to subscribe and follow so you don't miss out on any of our weekly tutorial drops. See you next time. Bye.